Hi, this is Ben Tupper. What is a reptile? Well, not that. That's an amphibian. But this is... A reptile is a polygon that can be dissected into smaller copies of itself. It can be broken down into similar pieces, or it can be copied and put together to create a larger version of itself. In a reptile, the smaller pieces must be the same shape and size as one another, and they must be the same shape as the whole. To say that more technically, let me review some terms. Two shapes are congruent if they have the same shape and size. Translations, rotations, and even reflections preserve congruence. Two shapes are similar if they might otherwise be congruent, but for a change in size. So restated, the components of a reptile need to be congruent to one another, that is, the same size and shape, and similar to their composition. Our first thought when presented with a new family of animals might be to build a taxonomy of sorts. What kind of reptiles are out there? Let's go reptile hunting and build a reptile zoo. First, a basic one. A square can be divided into four self-similar parts. We'll call it a rep4 tile. Alternatively, it can be divided into nine self-similar parts, so it's also a rep9 tile. In fact, it can be divided into any square number of parts, a rep n squared tile. Since stretching and skewing the square don't change this property, we can make a more general claim. All parallelograms, rectangles, and squares are rep n squared tiles. I was surprised to find that triangles have the same property. They can be divided into 4, 9, 16, or any square number of parts, even if the triangles are irregular. Also, don't these look like artichokes? Okay, so what do we have in our reptile zoo? We've got a few rep4 tiles crawling around. Any triangle, any parallelogram, and the L shape I showed you first. But these are all rep4 tiles. Aren't there any rep2 tiles? Rep3 tiles or more? There are only two rep2 tiles. The right isosceles triangle, and a rectangle, or any parallelogram, with these dimensions. You may recognize this shape as A4 paper, used in faraway lands where they use the metric system. If you cut it in half, hamburger-wise, you get a smaller piece of paper with the same aspect ratio as the original. Brilliant Europeans. So you see how a reptile works, how it stacks, and how it decomposes. So now that you're an expert reptile biologist, I have some specimens for you to classify. Here are four polygons. A regular hexagon, a regular hexagon cut in half, a long L, and a 30-60-90 triangle. Unless otherwise marked, each edge is length 1. Question 1. Which shape is not a reptile? Pause and think and come back when you're ready for the answer. If you said the hexagon, you are correct. A regular hexagon is not a reptile. Question two. Each shape here is a rep4 tile, but only one is also a rep3 tile. Show how these reptiles decompose. Would you look at that? All these beautiful reptiles, each with its own pattern and methods of reproduction. And there are many more. Play around and see what you can discover. P.S. If you liked these reptiles and you want to take it to the next level, you might want to consider fractals. Sierpinski's triangle 
is a self-similar fractal. It decomposes into three similar versions of itself, a wrapped three tile. Let me take you to our zoo's fractal aviary and allow me to introduce you to these bad boys, dragons. Remember I said there were only two rep2 tiles? Well, I kind of lied. If you allow fractals, should we call them fractiles? Then there are four more rep2 tiles. The highway dragon, the Levi dragon, the twin dragon, and the tame twin dragon. And if these dragons ever give you trouble, just call the zookeeper. He's trained in dealing with reptiles on a plane. 